Before this video starts, hit the comments and let me know what's your least favorite part of UFC 4. From the moment that the UFC 4 beta was released, I knew this game was absolutely fucked, to the point of no return. There were certain flaws, crucial flaws, that there was absolutely no turning back from. And it was obvious to me that this game was targeted towards casual fans and younger children. That decision by EA has resulted in them making more money off of this game than any UFC game ever. So in their eyes, this decision paid off and you can expect more of it. That being said, in this video, I'm taking 10 steamy shits all over UFC 4. So if you like that kind of thing, stick around. Oh yeah, and if you like mini documentaries on your favorite or not so favorite combat sports games, consider giving me a sub before you leave. Let's get started with the list. The first thing I freaking hate about UFC 4 are the missing frames in this game. One of the things that absolutely ruins UFC 4 that I don't hear enough people talking about are the missing frames in the striking. Here's what I mean. Sometimes you'll land a strike and you'll see the reverberation in your opponent's body, but you won't hear the strike and no damage will appear. Other times, the strike and the damage will land, but you don't get any visual or sound confirmation that it landed. Number two, sped up striking animations for the switch kick, spinning back kick, and the second strike to the body. It's not only that the strikes come out unrealistically fast, but in my opinion, it looks like the strike literally skips frames in order to make it faster than it should be. These spinning kicks and switch kicks come out faster than regular kicks and head kicks. In my opinion, this was done on purpose in order to appeal to the younger, more casual audience who loves throwing spinning shit, as Nick Diaz would say. Another strike that is sped up that doesn't get spoken about often is the second punch to a body. Whether you go jab lead hook to the body or jab straight to the body, have you noticed that the second strike is abnormally fast? If so, let me know in the comments. And if you disagree, well, shut the fuck up. No, no, I'm just joking. Let me know what you think. Number three, stamina is an unlimited resource. Not only are you able to throw spinning shit nonstop, your stamina barely decreases when you do. However, I will say that I turned the game on recently and I noticed that they patched part of the stamina problem. They made it so that your long-term stamina does drop at a reasonably fast rate. As you see on the screen, my opponent had almost no stamina by the end of the first round, so that's a good thing. However, look how fast my opponent is moving, even with extremely low stamina. It's almost as if there's no penalty for having one-fourth of a stamina bar. You guys agree with that? I know you guys play it a lot more than me. Let me know in the comments. Number four, stun states are arcadey and stupid. You may have heard me talk about this when I compared UFC Undisputed 3 to UFC 4 in a recent video, which is linked in the description and the comments. Anyway, in Undisputed 3, the stun states felt very intense, and UFC 4 just feels like a bad Mortal Kombat game. This was again, in my opinion, done for the younger and more casual audience, and as much as I hate to admit it as a hardcore fan, it likely assisted in this game selling more copies than any UFC game ever. Number 5. Dressing up like an animal is fucking stupid. Yes. I said it. At the risk of upsetting 3.4% of my audience, these costumes are the dumbest thing to ever happen in a UFC game. You may have the opinion that, well if you don't like it, simply don't use it and it doesn't affect you. And I could appreciate that, but try to understand. The fact that this was added into the game means EA spent money and time adding them in the game. That's just obvious. What if they allocated that time and money towards adding positions that actually affect the outcome of the fight, or adding elbows and hammer fists into their ground and pound system? I'm sure even you cuddly little bears can understand that, right? It also just looks bad when you're the sole MMA simulation provider, and your biggest additions to the game are Mortal Kombat mode, bear masks, and eliminating positions and moves from the game. Number 6. Submission game is repetitive, arcadey, and requires much less skill than UFC 3's. In UFC 3, there were 4 gates for you to escape out of. This made figuring out your opponent's tendencies in the submission game much harder, whether you're on offense or defense, because there's simply more options. 
Submission battles in UFC 3 were so intense because they required you to use so much brain power. It would literally be mentally tiring after fighting against a high level player. In order to submit your opponent, there was a process of noticing which gates they like to escape out of and in which sequence they try to do so. In UFC 4, there's this arcadey circular bar and it's extremely simple, just overlap your color to your opponents. Sure, you still have to pick up on your opponent's movement tendencies, but it's much more simple and surface level in my opinion. Number 7 is blatantly the most egregious entry on this list, and that is missing positions in the ground and the clinch. In my video where I compared Undisputed 3, I highlight that these positions were actually included in a game made 10 years ago. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out after this one. In UFC 4, the only way you can get to double unders is by bailing on a takedown, and that's fucking stupid. Also, single under in UFC 4 is not truly neutral, as whoever initiates the position has an advantage. In addition to that, cage seated and butterfly guard are nowhere to be found. Are any other positions missing from UFC 4? Let me know in the comments if I left any out. Number 8 is that UFC 4 has a poor ground and pound system. You've heard it a million times, so I'm not going to spend long on this entry, but UFC 4 has eliminated the ability to posture up, throw hammer fists, and elbows. Not only that, but you can no longer remain postured up for an extended period of time because this imaginary bar is pulling you down. Like you've heard me say a couple of times already, this was added for the younger, more inexperienced players so they wouldn't get ground fucked for the rest of eternity. Thanks kids, just like the internet and hip hop music, you've ruined it again. Number 9. No cage grappling positions. In UFC 4, every time you're in the clinch against a fence, you're in one of these two damn positions. Am I right about that? Like I said, I stopped playing this shit a while ago, so let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. Anyway, in UFC Undisputed 3, in UFC 3, and any other good MMA game, you would commonly end up in a variety of positions in the clinch against a fence. You could also keep your opponent there by denying their transitions, which you also cannot do in UFC 4. Moving on to the last entry, as you can tell I'm pretty passionate about this. Number 10. Knockdowns have no real impact on the fighter. When you get knocked down in UFC 4, your fighter hops right back up and resumes fighting at full capacity. When a fighter gets knocked down in real life, don't you think their defense is a bit compromised in the moments after? Don't you think their power is a bit decreased, their movement a bit decreased in the moments right after? In UFC 4, it's truly like Street Fighter. You can get knocked down 20 times, get right back up, lose all your stamina, and it's still all good. If you want to see that video that I mentioned before where I compare Undisputed 3 to UFC 4, click the video at the top of your screen. Or you can be a daredevil and click the video under it.